What we want to do in the next few minutes is take a look at creating, uh, from an industrial designer's point of view, a surface that encompasses uh, the internal components of a hand mixer. So what I'm going to do is go ahead up to the display configurations. I'm going to turn on the industrial design drawings. And you can see how he's, uh, or our industrial designer, whoever they might be, has uh, created some drawings from the front view. Uh, for the top view and for the back or right side view. Now, in order to us to be for us to be able to appreciate this even more, they've also uh, included the internal components for the front view. So, if we go to uh, use a Control F, you'll notice how those internal components, the 2D sketches for those internal components, fit within the design and kind of help uh, the industrial designer. Uh, figure out what type of shape this needs to be for our hand mixer. We can also go to a top view. And again, Control T gives us that top view. And you can again, you can see how these components fit in. And then finally, the end view. And so if I go to a Control R or right side view, it kind of lets us look down the back side of this particular mixer. So aesthetics are really important for an industrial designer of building the proper shapes, the things that fit your hands properly and won't cut your hand when you're using them. And so all of this becomes very important. What we want to do now is go ahead to uh, go ahead and create our hand mixer. So I'm going to change the display configuration uh, back to the hand mixer part. And you can see our designs are turned on. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and right mouse button click and edit or in place activate into the hand mixer uh, component. Now when we get in here you'll notice that uh, I already have the uh, 3D curves uh, created and I basically use the industrial design drawings just to build these curves but I actually haven't connected them yet as you can see. Now in Solid Edge, in this case ST3, we've got a couple of surfacing commands we can use to help us assist in doing this. First we can build the curves in several different ways but we also have a, the ability to use what we call blue dot to connect our curves and then be able to edit them either through the blue dot or through the curve. So let's go ahead and do that. The next step would be to use the blue dot command under the surfacing tab in the surfaces group. And by selecting the blue dot basically I'm going to start at the top and just identify the curves. And by the way, when you're identifying the curves, if you pick where a dot appears, that's not what you want to select. You want to actually select the curve itself. So just move away from it and come back and select it where the dot doesn't appear. And you'll notice it creates a blue dot for us very quickly. So what I'm going to do is just step around this part and you'll notice how the curves will adjust themselves to actually uh, touch each other when I apply a blue dot to them. I'm then going to go down to the bottom side and do the same thing. And there's a dot, so I don't want that. I want the curve by itself. And you'll notice how it adds that blue dot very quickly. So as I step through, you'll notice it's made the six connections on the top and bottom. And so finally, we'll go across the inside to make sure these curves are connected. Notice how the curves adjust. And basically, I created these curves ahead of time just to kind of save some time so uh, you can go through the demo a little bit quicker. Now, once the curves are connected with blue dots, the next uh, command that we want to take a look at is blue surf. We call it a blue surf. We can use these curves to create our blue surf or surface. So by selecting blue surf, we can obviously we can change any of those options if we want to. In this case, our curve connectivity is using blue dots. So we'll go ahead and stick with that. And we can identify our first curve, accept it, and then go to the second curve and accept it. And then finally our third curve. And you notice that it actually fits the surface across those three curves. But as we look down, you'll notice that we didn't actually include these uh, these other curves. So in order to do that, so it'll take the shape of those curves, we're going to go to our guide curve step and just simply start selecting these guide curves and accepting them. And you'll notice how the shape starts to take, or the surface starts to take the shape of those curves. So we'll pick the next one, accept it, and I'm accepting with the right mouse button click. And then I can accept the last curve, and you'll notice how uh, the surface 
adheres now to uh, both sets of curves. So when that's completed, the next thing that we're going to take a quick look at is the ability to manipulate our surfaces either through the blue dot or the curves themselves. Now in order to do that all you have to do is just go identify that dot and you'll notice it automatically gives you a quick bar here and you can go right into dynamic edit. Now the neat thing about blue dot is when you select it it gives you a couple of options that you can change. It shows you the location of the of the blue dot it also gives you a triad, so if you want to lock into an axis, like in this case we might want to lock into the x-axis and just pull that dot straight out. But we also have what we call a local edit. And what that basically means is if I pick the dot and pull it now out in, a, in the y-axis, it's just a local edit on that particular dot. It doesn't really care about the rest of the curve, so it gets a little bit distorted. Well, that's not really what we're looking for, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm going to reselect the dynamic edit option again. I'm going to reselect the Y axis, but this time I'm going to change to shape edit. Now what this is going to do, and you notice how the curve highlights? So curve 1 is this curve, curve 2 is this curve. I'm going to use shape edit. It's going to take into consideration the shape of those two curves. Now when I pull out this blue dot, you notice how the rest of the shape kind of comes out with it or excuse me, the curves adjust with it. So it doesn't distort it quite as much. So what I want to do is just kind of pull it out and give it a little bit more room or shape uh, to the body of our design. At the same time, I can also come down and I can select a curve. And you'll notice that it allows me to identify uh, any one of the points along that curve and adjust it. So if I, for example, grab this particular curve I can move it out, maybe give it a little bit of shape in the front, and I might even want to add a little more up here and just kind of fatten it up a little bit. So very flexible capability to edit the curves or the blue dots that define the shape of your surfaces, our blue surf. When we're done with that, let's go ahead and turn off. Go ahead and turn off our sketches using Hide All Sketches, and also we can turn off our blue dots. Now what we want to do is kind of conform more to what our industrial designer is looking for. And so we're going to turn on a profile called Mixer Profile. And you can see it's just a 2D sketch that kind of defines a shape that they're looking for. The next thing we want to do is simply project a curve onto this surface. So in order to do that I'm going to select Single, select the curve, accept it, and then I'm going to change this to body and I'm going to project it onto this body. Now I don't know what side the curve is on from the body so if you move your cursor you can go left or right or if you get in the middle it'll go in both directions to make sure that it does get projected on to our surface. Now that that's completed what we can use is the trim command to quickly identify the body, accept it, and then identify the curve and then of course we want to remove the outside of the curve and you can see that it's going to trim that surface away. When that's completed another way of trimming material is by using the extrude command and building a surface.